Hello everyone and welcome back to our series on animating this login view controller. When we last left off, we had created or extracted a custom view from a view controller. And in this episode, we're going to take a look at how to transform this red block here into a view element that has this nice little animation where it takes this label and animates it up into the right. All right, let's see how we can do that. All right, I'm just going to stop the simulator. Let's go over to our form field view here and see what we can do to, to style this up so it starts to look like something more like this. And to begin with, let's start by doing a couple things to this view. One is let's start by rounding these corners here. We'll give these a rounded edge. Secondly, let's change the background of the view to be gray. And then thirdly, let's add this label here and give it a title of email. Okay, so how are we gonna do that? I'm just gonna move this over here so we can see what we're doing. Well, let's start by, let's start by defining that label at the top. So let's create a new label here. I'm just gonna call this a UI label. And let's go ahead and get that into our view. So let's start by styling it. Okay, what do we need to do here? So right now we've got our background, this, this kind of a red color. We'll keep it red for now just because that'll help us figure out, you know, what our sizing is. But really, let's start by doing a couple things. One, let's set the background color of the view itself. Okay, maybe let's not go with red. Let's instead go with a nice shade of gray. And in this case, we're going to use a nice shade of gray called System Gray 5. So let's just replace that. And let's also give these a nice rounded edge. And the way we can do that in our views is it's actually the layer underneath, this is the core animation layer that sits underneath every view. In there, there's something called a corner radius, which we can set. And by giving this a value, it's going to round that corner for us by whatever radius we specify. And I just happen to have played with this. We're going to give it a quarter radius of 60 divided by 4. And I'll explain what, later why we chose 60. 60 is actually going to be the height of our element. But I've just picked 4 here, and that's going to round these edges here. So if we run this now, let's just take a look and see what that looks like behind the scenes. So there we can see our view now is transformed. We've got some rounded corners here, a gray background. That is a great start. Next, let's see if we can't get that label in there. And let's continue working in our style section here because we're still styling elements. And our label can basically function like this. We'll get it set up for auto layout. We'll give its text a background color of system gray. And we'll also set the text of it to be email. So that's going to style our label for us. The next thing we need to do here is lay it out. So what we would like to do when we lay out this label is basically have email sit in the middle of our view. And I'm just going to pin it off to the edge here with a spacing of about 16 using that system multiplier we talked about. All right, so how do we do that? Let's start by adding it to our subview. So basically because we're in a view, we can now just go add subview and add our label right in there. That's one of the nice things about working in a view, not in a view controller. You have more direct access to the methods that you want to call on it. And then basically we're going to do some layout. I'm just going to drop in that constraint snippet that I had before. And let's start by just laying out the label in the center. So I'm just going to mark this up by showing where I'm going to do my label workout. And let's go label. I want to put this in the center of the Y. So I want this to basically sit in the center Y of my view. So I'm going to go center Y dot constraint is equal to the center Y of our view. That will put it in the middle. And then I want it to come right off that left or leading edge a bit. So I'm going to go uh, label dot leading, whoops, leading anchor constraint is going to be equal to the system spacing after our views leading anchor with a multiplier of two. Let's just run that now and see what that looks like. And that should give us a label just off the edge here of two. Okay, not bad. 
Now let's see if we can't fix this size so that it looks like it's something more reasonable, something along the sides of this. And we can do that in our view by basically going back to that property we looked at earlier, the intrinsic content size. So right now it's this property that we're overriding here, which is giving it this 200 by 200 size. Let's see if we can actually change that. Let's give it a height of 60 that I just know from empirically playing with this. And if we don't really know what our width is, because we want our width to be defined by the pinning of how we do the auto layout. So in this case, I don't really wanna specify this, I could. Intrinsic content size is, is a suggestion. It's not a required or hard auto layout uh, priority 1000 requirement, meaning these don't actually have to be adhered to. They're just recommendations. But if I wanna be clear and communicate that I don't know what this width is, I can replace this with a no intrinsic metric on the UI view. And that's basically saying this view doesn't know what its width is, it's not specifying it, but it does know what its height is out of 60. So if we run this now, we should see this start to collapse a little bit more and start to look more reasonable around what we look like, which is great. Now it'd be nice if our undo button maybe had the similar dimensions to our other button here. So why don't we just go and quickly fix that? Let's add two constraints to our undo button. And this one does live back in our view controller. So let's go back to our view controller here. And I'm just gonna add two more constraints down here for the undo button. One is we're gonna specify undo button height. Why don't you equal the form field view height, which we just specified as 60. So that should make the heights the same. And for the width, why don't we make the width equal the same while we're at it? So that way the undo button will have the same width as our form field up here. And if we run that now, we should get something that looks ah, kind of more comparable, that's nice. You'll notice the difference in rounding of edges because this is a iPod Touch seventh generation, which is gonna be a little bit narrower than the iPhone eight. Um, actually, no, I take that back. I can round these buttons. They just have different rounding basically. And I, I can go ahead and change the rounding on that button. Why don't we do that to make it consistent? Down here, corner radius, let's make that also 60 divided by four because that's how we specified it in our form view. And now we should have some similar looking buttons and we're good to go. Okay, so this isn't looking too bad. We've got the layout the way we'd like. Before we can get to the animating, there's one more thing we need to do. We need to make our view up here tappable. We really want to be this to behave kind of like a function, but really when we tap anywhere in here, we want to be able to react to that because it's the tap that's gonna trigger the animation, slide that thing up and to the left. So we need to figure out a way of making this tappable. And one way to do this with the view is to add a tap gesture like this. Let's go back into our form field view. And in the setup, or sorry, the style, let's go back here and add a tap gesture for our view like this. So this is creating a UI tap gesture recognizer. We're basically adding ourselves the target, meaning we'd like to be the ones receiving any messages regarding this. And then in our selector, we specify what's the function that will be executed when someone taps our tap gesture. And then we just take that tap gesture and we add it to it as a gesture recognizer to our view. Now, the one thing we need to fill in here is this tapped method, which we can do like this. This is going to be, uh, let's put this under layout. This is going to be a objc function because we are working in ui kit which needs an objective c bridge so that's why we need this add objective c here in front of the func so that basically this method can be executed as part of the objective c runtime but basically all we're doing here is we're going to tap that um, basically verify that we have tapped it and we are tappable and if we run this now we should be able to go up to our view tap it and indeed see that we are registering taps from this along with our undo, which is great.
Okay, so now we finally get to the fun part. Now we finally get to add the animation. Let's see what that looks like. So what we want to do is when someone taps in here, we want to take that email and animate it up and to the left. That's kind of what we want to do. Tap up to the left. How do we do that? Well, here's the code. I've put this in a separate mark called animations. I've got an extension down here on our form field view, and I've got a function here called enter email animation. And what this is really doing, we want to eventually take someone's email address in, but this is kind of how animating UI kit views work, is to use this thing called a UI property animator, running property animator. What this is, is this takes whatever you pass in as a block here and runs it as part of an animation loop. You can specify things like duration. You could delay it for a couple of seconds if you want. There's a whole bunch of options you can specify with regards to timing curves and easing in and things like that. I've just chose to keep this really as simple as possible for now. And what we're gonna do when we animate in here, when we tap this, we wanna set the background to be white. We wanna change the text color of our email here to be green. Note also, we are gonna specify a border. See how the border changes here? Now we don't have a border, but when we tap, we want that border to be one. And we're also gonna make that border color system green too, just to make it all consistent. So that's just doing the, the styling. The actual animation happens down here. It's a two-step process. First, we take the, we define what's called a transform, and we basically say how we'd like to translate something according to the grid system that we've got here. So the origin is always zero, zero in the upper corner here. It's increasing, sorry, increasing X this way, increasing Y this way. So to go up to the left, we need to go minus eight, and I've just picked minus 24 empirically because I've run this many times iteratively. I know that's about where I want it to go. That's the transpose. Then the scaling, that's what's gonna take this email and shrink it down 0.7 or 30% smaller. And it's really this line here, which was really key. Taking the transpose and then concatenating it to the scale is what gives us the effect we want. I just had to play with this a bit and that's just kind of how it works. So basically by doing this line here, we're gonna combine those animations and bring them up and to the left. And that's kind of it. It's, it's almost a three-liner. I know it's kind of anticlimactic, but that's all there is to really bringing this up and to the left. If we had some more work we wanted to do after the animation, we could put that in the completion block here. We're passed in the position. But that's basically it. So with this method now, when someone taps, instead of printing tapped, I'm going to go enter email animation. And if we run this now, that should indeed bring our email up and to the left. Great. Now undo isn't working yet because when I'm debugging this, it's really handy to undo and view these animations again. So let's go ahead and add some undo on functionality so we can reset this back to how it was before. Okay, so when it comes to undoing, what we really wanna do is undo this animation that we did to get the label to the upper right. So to do the exact opposite, we can create a function called undo. And this is a slightly different form of UA property animator. It does the same thing, but instead of executing the property animator immediately, you can also define them as discrete animations with different timings and everything, and then chain them together after. We're not gonna do that here, but I just wanted you to see this different way of instantiating and executing. So here I'm gonna create a property view animator I'm gonna make the duration uh, 0.1, the same as what we had up there. Linear curve, and here's some stuff that we're gonna reset. So we're gonna put the background back to system gray five. We're gonna put the text back to system gray, get rid of the border width, set the background color. We're gonna clear that out. And this is the key line here, self-label transform identity. This is a special core graphics representation of what this view actually looks like mathematically reset to its original state. So you want to use identity whenever you want to get back to your, your purest form of where you began. So this effectively resets it for us. This is a property on CGA affine transform. So by doing this now, 
we've got this function called undo. All we need to do now is to call it from our undo tap button, which of course we defined and set up in our view controller. So now instead of printing undo, we can take our form field view, just call this undo method on it. And if we run it now, we should be able to animate up and to the left, but also undo it by tapping and bringing it back to the lower right. So this is really handy for when you're debugging and working with animations. You're gonna to wanna to try these things out a lot. You're gonna to wanna to look at the positioning of these things, make some adjustments, undo it. So that's why we have the undo button here. And this is something I used a lot when developing this. But now you see uh, how we can hook it up and how you can use it too. Thank you.